Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness, and this is Tri-Cities Community Television. Our interview today is taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of Coquitlam First Nations. And we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to care for the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. This afternoon we're joined by Matt Johnlick, who is a first term City of Coquitlam councillor. So thank you so much for joining us today, Matt. Thanks for having me. I think last time I was here was uh, just shortly <laughs> before the election where we had a follow-up interview. As also the youngest member of council and a new time homeowner dealing with a, so a, you, an ever increasing mortgage rate, I can appreciate those cost of living pressures. You're bringing a little bit different of a perspective to the, the budget table and, and can you tell us some, um, just very briefly, some of the highlights you mentioned, policing and... Yep, we funded some new RCMP officers, um, which is something really important as we do have a growing community. Um, uh, uh, more fire resources around um, some wildfire prevention. Uh, right. We saw just a few months ago uh, that that's, that is a reality that is not With climate change. Um, yeah. We saw what happened in Minnecotta Regional Park, um, as well as a number of service enhancements around our, our rec centers um, and to do more planning around emergency weather response, mm -hmm. whether it be through. Uh, the amount of snow we get, which I'll say in, in Coquitlam, we have a unique challenge because of the various slopes. Uh, yes. It makes snow plowing a little bit more challenging. The terrain. The, the terrain is not yes. helpful for it, but I'm, I'm glad we, we have, uh, you know, throughout the, the most recent snow, we had 18 trucks out pretty much the whole time, um, wow. clearing out the roads. Uh, but of course, you know, more to do there because we're seeing, we're seeing the snow hit harder and then later in the year than we're used to and atmospheric rivers is the other thing um, yes have some work to do around that but. definitely climate is changing and we're having to deal with those effects i understand we may be looking at snow again this weekend don't tell me that no, no, no. i'm sorry I'm outside right now it's beautiful <laughs> i know for the snow uh, well fingers crossed it bypasses us but that's that's what's on the forecast. No, it's, I mean, that's been great. And, and a number of other things. I, I, you know, I got to say the highlight for me uh, so far has been the delegation we had from the Charles Best Secondary to... Oh, can you uh, tell us a little bit? Um, uh, a pride flag at, at City Hall, which um, was unanimously uh, approved by council. So thrilled that that's going to be coming up during Pride Month, uh, Pride Week, which is gosh, it's, it's in June, I believe June 19th, maybe, I think is the start of Pride Week. I might be a little off on that, but that was just awesome to see the, the pride flag out in City Hall, in the chambers, and have all council well, it's together to support. It's wonderful to have that support, and also that a school feels comfortable coming in with that kind of delegation, and to be um, welcomed so openly. I think that sends a really good signal to the community. Well, and, and it's also about creating an inclusive workspace, too. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something we've really tried to focus on, and, and hearing some of the stories from, from city staff after seeing that, who now right. that they could talk about maybe their partner who right. is, if they are in any kind of LGBT um, uh, relationship. Um, yeah that maybe they felt they couldn't. And, and I think seeing the, the symbolic power of that uh, in the council chambers really led to um, a shift I've been hearing among staff. Well, I think it's just been super heartwarming. It shows leadership from the city, which is um, wonderful in areas where we need to see a little bit of progress, I think. Matt, I see you out in the community all the time, and I, I always um, hear Matt was here, Matt was there. You seem to be very engaged. Um, why do you think it's important to go to different events and to stay in touch with, with your constituents? Well, I mean, I got to start by saying it's the fun part of the job. It, okay. It, you know, going to events <laughs> and, and festivals and talking to the people beats the heck out of uh, the, the minutia of uh, uh, tech engineering reports around where new sewer okay. pipes are going. Uh, not that that isn't important. It is a very important part of the job, but uh, it, it can be the more dry part. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, you know, it's so important to be out and hearing from people. Sometimes yeah. I find it, whether, and I think whether it's local government, provincial, federal, you, you can find yourself in an echo chamber. Right. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't have all the answers to things. I, I don't think staff necessarily have all the answers to things. Mm -hmm. um, so hearing from the community what their needs are can really, like, through the dialogues, through going through events, you you, you catch those things. You you learn about what's going on, where the challenges are, um, that if you know, if you only attend council meetings, you don't necessarily get to hear, so. Right, so you're looking to the community um, to hear their concerns and, and to stay connected that way, which is wonderful. Um, you are also on a couple of 
committee, co committees, committees. <laughs> I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that. I think one is the sports and recreation. Yeah. Can so you tell us what you're doing there? The internal city committees that are starting, they'll be a part of. Uh, I'll start with sports and rec. Sure. Um, we're very excited about that. Now, this is a advisory committee where we work with uh, some of the various sports groups, the, the Field Sports Users Association, right. the Arena Sports, Tennis Club, as well as some citizen appointments that might also be involved with um, uh, some local sports groups. I know uh, we have some folks from Sports Coquitlam Sports Hall of Fame, the right. Sharks, um, and and this is a chance, kind of like going back to where where we um, you know being out at events and hearing from people. It's also important these committees where we're hearing from the community experts. Right. So these com Sorry. committees are a place where the community can have some input as well. Exactly, and oftentimes the user groups have the most knowledge of right. what's happening on field space. Our our soccer groups having trouble booking field space. Um, mm -hmm. How do we work with the Coquitlam Sharks as, you know, we're rebuilding Spaney Pool. This is uh, critical to the Sharks uh, swim season, right? So right. how do we how do we hear from them and work around their needs so kids can keep swimming um, competitively? Excellent. And just a little bit earlier, you had talked about an inclusive community. Um, you're on another committee that has to do with accessibility and I guess connected to that would be inclusivity. Can you tell us a, a little yeah, bit so, about that? So we also have the Universal Accessibility Committee. It, it, it focuses a lot around uh, people who, around accessibility around the city. Mm -hmm. How do we make sure people with disabilities, seniors, more so um, f folks who might have um, uh, Im impediments to really engaging and getting around the city. Right. How do we make sure that we are building a city that also works for that? How do we reduce barriers? So you're talking about wheelchair ramps maybe, or ramps hearing impaired? And... Hearing impaired, um, seniors who might have mobility issues. Right. There's a lot of focus around that. And one of the, the pieces that that um, group is going to be taking on is that the province just introduced some um, um, accessibility legislation. Um, so we're going to be looking at that and, and oh. really exploring how we can continue to forward uh, making sure that the city remains uh, accessible. Um, and, and development is a big thing around that too. How, right. how do we think about accessibility in terms of the new homes that we're building? Right, and we're seeing a lot of new homes and development going on in Coquitlam right now. Um, uh, just one more question. I know this is one that you've been quite passionate about even before becoming a city councillor, is the library and homelessness. Can you tell us yeah, a little so bit about I, that? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm back on the library board as our council rep. Um, I, I, I think I, I, I termed out, but I found a loophole as to how to get back <laughs> on the board there through council. And, well done. <laughs> which, which has been great. Um, right. Lots of exciting things happening there too as we start to move towards um, looking at a, a, another branch up on Burke Mountain. Is that oh, okay. Uh, we continue to work on the design there. Uh, also, just to expand the services in, in general. Um, also, uh, I'm, I'm on the Tri-City Homelessness and Housing Task Group as our, our council rep, and, mm -hmm. and that's also some work that's, that's near and dear for me. Um, you know, homelessness does continue to be a How are challenge. we doing on homelessness? Is it getting better, well, worse? I'm very curious to see. We, we, we recently just had the Homelessness Council. Right. We're going to really see, are, are we seeing things getting worse? Are we seeing things getting better? The challenge with that is also in terms of how we how we measure homelessness can be really right. challenging uh, because we have homelessness who people who are out on the streets or, or in yeah. camps in the forest but we also know that there are a lot of people who are maybe not seen homelessness and maybe I think, living on e other people's couches and people couch surfing i also yeah. think to um some of the folks that we do have up on the semi riverview lands yes who might be getting mental health care there who, who have really been, been in Coquitlam now for a number of years, who have started to make this their home, but right. when they are discharged, they, they don't have a house to go to. They are right. technically unhoused. Um, so we don't have the supports in place to and, and necessarily is, is deal really with that. a challenge when we think about mm -hmm. housing too, in terms of that, that staircase, right? Where right. we have folks at the bottom of, of the stair and we're missing some of the steps still in terms mm -hmm. of being able to transition people out of shelter space and, and mental health care into some more supportive housing, really um, deeply subsidized models. And that's how we end up in, in an unfortunate situation where I mean, we can look to 3030 Gordon and you have people right. who have been living there for years, even though it's meant to be a temporary shelter space. 
Yes. So that's something that you will be working on as well. We oftentimes think of homelessness as more a municipal or more a provincial level um, jurisdiction, but it sounds like there's a concern in some things that can be done at the municipal level as well. I, I believe there is. And look, I, my view and the, and the philosophy I bring to it is, you know, we, we have a role to play here. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much finger pointing that goes on and, and absolutely the province has a role to play, the, fed, the, the, play, the federal government has a role to play, but I, my belief is that we do too. And I think mm -hmm. there are some things that the city can do to contribute. Right. I, I just want to get good stuff done. I want to help people out there. And um, I, I think the city does have a role to play on that. Well, congratulations on getting on to City Council. Um, you, it sounds like you've done some really good work already and you bring a passion and knowledge and um, everything with you, so we'll wish you all the best, and I hope we well, can thanks. touch the game And, and you know, I, I, I'll just leave it off. I, I certainly count myself lucky and appreciate the support from Coquitlam residents. Um, it, it is an incredible privilege. And also, I, I'm, I'm one of the lucky councillors. I, you know, I have a great council to work with. There's so much mm -hmm. experience on there. We, you know, sometimes we certainly disagree, but... Uh, but that's part depth, of the... There's a depth of experience yeah. that has been so helpful in terms of helping me to be able to, to hit the ground running and great staff. So I'm, I'm so appreciative to the folks there and, and, and to the residents. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Matt, and I hope we can talk again soon. Thanks.